All right, hey Sam, we're gonna start here in about a minute or so. He'll come to you, so go ahead and mute your mic, and we'll uh, we'll we'll okay, perfect. yeah, you'll know when come to you. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, mate. All right. Whew. Am- amateur hour, Bill. I, mean, I thought you've done this before. <laughs> if you saw my setup right now, you'd see like I don't know, like fifteen different windows open on my computer. Luckily, I have three monitors in front of me. I'm like, like I'm like I'm gonna hack someone's bank computer or something with all this. <laughs> It's a little uh, ludicrous, as they say in the, uh, you know, I don't know, somewhere. Someone says it. <laughs> you know what, uh, Fitzy? I think it's time. Let, let, let's. It's not o'clock. We got two big guests coming up. What do you think? Kick into it now. Get going. Let's go. Let's do this. So if I have all the gears working and things are going live everywhere, let's just do this. All right. All right. It's time. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to USA Rugby Happy Hour Live. Thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, We've got two big-hitting Major League Rugby fly halves joining us. Uh, Rugby New York's Sam Windsor and Seattle Seawolves' AJ Alatimu, and I will ask him later if I said that right. Um, We're here to talk about their upcoming match uh, this weekend against each other, and which obviously is a rematch of last year's Shield Final. It should be a doozy, as I've heard somewhere online. Uh, to get updates on future shows uh, you know, uh, and news about USA Rugby, Major League Rugby, and more, follow Eagles Overseas, and Rugby Morning here on Twitter and other social media channels. And also do us a favor, share the show with your friends. Uh, you know, the more the merrier. Share the love. I am Bill Baker of Eagles Overseas, and my co-host is Rugby Morning's John. Uh, John. John. Is your name John? John Fitzpatrick. What's up, John? What's up, Fitzy? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on uh, which creditor is coming after me. Well, that, that, well, I feel yeah. like you actually played rugby tonight. I feel like I'm the one who got hit in the head. How are, how are you feeling? <laughs> Bill, I am so freaking sore right now. <laughs> and you were just playing touch, right? Yeah, I was just playing touch, but uh, I hadn't really run around like that in, in a couple of years. It felt good to get out there. My fitness was good, but man, yeah. I am tight and sore, but it was fun. Yeah. Nice, nice. I, I'm actually jealous. I, 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 I gotta get out again. But uh, I, I went for actually a, a nice little walk slash jog slash hike. Went through some hills around my neighborhood, and I'm still yeah. that slow ACL recovery for me. I could be pushing it, but I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna, I don't know, pull something in, and I'm in the woods, and a, a cougar comes out and kills me. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my mind goes well, places. Bill, you'll, uh, <laughs> you'll love this because you know I play in in Washington D.C. There's a group that plays every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Nice and. Uh, Ben Sima rolled out there. Oh, no former, way. Former Eagle, former, former Seattle, Seattle player. Seattle player, yeah. Yeah. He, it looks like he could still play, man. He was running really well out there, and you could just tell. Like, he was head and shoulders and waist and knees better than everyone. <laughs> oh, oh, and he probably, laid, he probably like, you know, didn't even try hard against you. <laughs> the, the locks were flowing. Yeah, it was, it was, it was cool. And he, like, 60-meter um, kicks or anything like that. Didn't he, wasn't Ben good for that? <laughs> he was. He we was. played on a shorter field because we didn't have much space. But uh, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it. All right. Listen, I think we need to get right into it. Again, we got a lot to talk about. Talk about with these two guests today. Uh, just quick couple notes, everybody. We are streaming live also on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and YouTube. I believe last week I didn't hit the right button and we didn't go live on Instagram, but I believe we are live on there. And I will look once Fitzy takes over a question or two. Um, if you are listening on those platforms, you can DM us a question and we'll get do the best to get them on this show. Or if you want to ask a question live, you need to jump over to Twitter Spaces and join us here. Uh, and to do so, at the bottom left of the screen, you'll see a mic thing that says request to speak. Go ahead and request it. And we'll get you up here as soon as possible to ask uh, Fitzy or myself, um, and especially our guests, questions. Uh, we love having you, the listeners, drive this show. Uh, with that said, let's, let's jump right into it. Our first guest tonight, is still riding the uh, Major League Rugby Shield high, let's say, is Rugby New York Ironworkers Fly Half, Sam Windsor. Sam, how are you, man? I'm well. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. You know, I, I was reading your Twitter bio, um, and there was one part that uh, kind of laughed a little bit about it. And I didn't laugh. I was intrigued. Appreciator of sneakers. Is that why you're playing in New York? Isn't that like the sneaker mecca? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the many sneaker meccas, I guess, of the States. Houston, where I spent obviously four years, five years, was uh, was pretty popular. You know, sneakers are pretty popular down there as well. But it's just a, a bigger community here in New York, I guess. And uh, I've probably got my brother to blame originally, and then my wife probably reignited that uh that love of sneakers by, by buying me a few pairs <laughs> a few years ago. And unfortunately, it's, I mean, it's not a bad habit to have. It's healthy, I guess. But uh, yeah. yeah, 
Oh, oh. I appreciate it. I appreciate a good sneaker. Jordan's probably obviously up oh, there with, of with course. the best, but, but yeah. there's a bunch of other companies are coming out now with, with some heat. And uh, yeah, I just uh, I like to look at them, I guess. Have you been over to <laughs> um, Flight Club on Broadway? Yeah, so I'm, an, I'm a big. I'm not a big believer of the resale and, yeah. and having to pay ten times the price oh, for a shoe. So if if it's meant to be, I get them at retail, and if not, then uh, you know, yeah, oh, well, next one. <laughs> yeah, 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 and not to not to age myself or give away my age, but uh, when I was playing basketball in high school, my mother bought me the original Air Jordans. Uh, uh, if I would have held on to those, you'd probably find them in Flight Club right now. So, <laughs> yeah, probably five or six figures. That's what they. Oh, at crazy. least, at least. Yeah, no. uh, I I did see also many of the players from uh, rugby New York were out and about um, like late last month in Manhattan trying to raise attention to the club. You know, pan I don't know busking, panhandling, whatever else. Were you part of that? <laughs> yeah, we had. Uh, it was a bit of a I guess a team bonding little group group exercise. We spent the night uh, around Times Square and did some team building stuff, and then we got given. Uh, a list of things that we had to accomplish over the course of the day. So split into mini teams and sent on our way through all five boroughs to try and get photos, busk for some money, uh, nice. visit some visit some of the sites and landmarks of the city. Um, so it was great. You know, a lot of guys, we've got a fair few new guys in the team, so it was a great chance for them to get out and, and experience New York uh, in its truest form. Is, now, is that part of your contract? You get an X amount of dollars and whatever you get busking? <laughs> I think I, – I, I hope the boys donated it to the Team Kitty. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> we're an honest bunch, so I'm, I'm sure I'll find it somewhere. All right. Let's 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 get into the group. Let's get into play. Let's let's talk Rugby New York. Uh, a number of changes in the off offseason. Uh, I guess we'll start with uh, um, the name change first. What do you think about the whole uh, – the Iron Workers as a name for the team? It's it's I love it. It's probably been an unofficial, maybe an internal yeah. name for the team the last couple of years. So this year, uh, Rick and the the organisation put a lot of effort into to bring it to life and make it public. So um, we draw a lot of similarities to the iron workers in New York and, and the work they do you know, to create this city and and you know, make it famous around the world. So um, to the teamwork aspect of it, you know, the group aspect, um, and and you know, changing the skyline. Is, is something that, that we're about. So um, really relative and, and quite a powerful message for us to, to take into this season and hopefully the fans can get behind it and, and understand a bit more about us as a team. Yeah, it sounds like they are. All right, second on the list from me, and then Fitzy's got a couple also. Um, you have a new head coach, uh, James Semple. You know, talk about what James brings to the team. You know, What's been his overall message to the club leading into the season? Um, it, it's been great. He's been... He's quite a young coach. Uh, for those that are up to date on their MLR trivia, he actually played for the Utah Warriors in yeah. the 2019 season. So I think I played against him a couple of times, um, which was awesome. So coming in as a new coach to a league, having some experience and understanding of the landscape here in America has helped him a lot. Um, and he's got a, you know, a plethora of experienced players um, to coach that he can kind of lean on and uh and help him through but uh he's he's energetic he's he's got a great outlook on the game and um he's fit in really well he loves new york he's got a great spot um every morning he comes in with a smile on his face and still pinching himself that he gets to do something he loves in a city like new york so um yeah between him and ben afiaki the the forwards coach who's come in they've created a great culture for us and and hopefully you know we haven't dropped off from from where we finished the season and we can just continue you know that that rise Sam, you, you talked a little bit about some of the uh, some of the changes, right? You talked about some of the players. Some players have, have left, some have retired. Andy Ellis certainly is is around joining the coaching staff, which is cool, right? I think that just kind of means that the culture there is good if, if, if players want to stick around and continue to be a part of it. Some new players have joined, right? K. Walter. Correct. Um, yeah. Has, has, he, has he joined the club yet? Is he officially there out running around? Yeah, Tay Tay's here. He's uh, he played in he played in both the trial games, um, and he's asserted himself. You know, he slipped into the team. You know, seamlessly. He's uh, familiar with a lot of the guys. Went to went to college with a couple of boys and, and played rugby with them back in New Zealand. So that familiarity just helps us gel quicker and, and form those relationships on the field. So another guy, you know, brought his young family with him and just loving life in New York here and another opportunity to. I guess show his show his skills. Pretty hard done by and unlucky with some selections back in uh, the southern hemisphere. So, and I don't want to call it a lifeline because you know he probably had other opportunities, but saw New York as as an opportunity to get out, you know, of his comfort zone, come to a big city, uh, and then ply his trade at, at a team where he's got some familiar faces and and uh, a team of success. I guess. 
Yeah, of course. And, and, and speaking about familiar faces, you've got a, a fellow Aussie who's joined you this year, Brooklyn Hardiker. Yep. I think I pronounced his last name correctly. Um, yes. Of course, a guy named Brooklyn would land for the New York Iron Workers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> does he get teased at all about that? Not really. No, it's kind of, I mean, it's everyone probably thinks it, but it's, um, it's time. not something that we don't, we, you know, if we lived in Brooklyn, maybe it'd be, maybe it'd be a point of, you know, you know, I don't know, concern, but no, he's, uh, he's, he's great. He's obviously had a tough year last year, uh, injury in the preseason, uh, you know, lots of reps on him coming out of high school back in Australia. So, um, he's, he's nearing a hundred percent fitness. So everyone's really excited to see what he can bring uh, to the team and, and just see him lighted up on the field. Yeah, absolutely. Is there, um, you know, Nick Feeks is certainly he's he's joined the squad this year. Um, any other players that are new to the squad where you're most excited about? Feeksy's Feeksy's a good one. So I've, I've obviously played against Feeksy for yeah. the entirety of the MLR, but uh, a good mate of mine that I grew up with, he was a year or two years above me and my brother's year at school was actually Nick's teacher at at, uh, at high school. So okay. Nick reminds me of that quite regularly and kind of just keeps me grounded and remembering that I am getting on in, in the years. So uh, Feeks, he's been great. He's been a great asset to the team as well. He, he just brings uh, a lot of character and, and enthusiasm to trainings and, and, and the whole culture of it. So, um, again, looking forward to playing with him instead of against him because he's quite a tough, bony player um, and, he, and he's electric. So he's going to light it up this year for sure. And then for us across the board, you mentioned Tay already. Um, and Hamish Dalziel is a new addition to us. We lost Will Tucker. Um, he got a super rugby contract uh, and then the, the team's brought in Hamish Dalziel, another lock from New Zealand Brad Tucker uh, from Seattle, obviously a massive addition for us so um, we didn't we didn't lose too many guys but the guys that we did lose, I think we replaced them with you know equal if not better players so really exciting for us as a squad to, to continue the form we showed towards the end of last year and, and hopefully continue on starting this weekend Yeah, <clears throat> speaking of um, more exciting changes Brand new venue, right? Memorial Stadium in yes. uh, Mount Vernon. So, no, no longer you know having that high school field with the basketball court in the <laughs> background. Which you know, honestly, watching it on TV on the Rugby Network, it looked kind of cool because you would see people like stop and be like, "What is going on over there?" Um, but yeah, how excited are the players to play? I guess in a, like a I hate to say, it, but like a legit venue. Yeah, it's it's a home for us now, and that's what New York struggled with for their their existence. Really, you know, they're out at Coney Island, and then. They're out here in, at Cavan Point and then Hoboken and then out, out in Queens. So um, to have a home and to sort of have a home that's going to be there for a few years for us makes it easier to build that community and, and, and draw those fans out to, to come to us consistently. Uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of success at home last year and we played really well on the road. So partly due to the fact that we probably weren't that comfortable in our own home field so this provides us with a with a venue to to make our own and and to, you know to fortify and make it a fortress um and it'll attract you know it's north of the city so there's lots of rugby fans sort of north of manhattan up towards connecticut westchester that area uh hoboken might have been a bit far for them to come it's quite accessible from the city metro north to get there in 30 minutes um so hopefully, and it's in quite a quite a nice little area of, of of the town up there, where there's a bit of a few other sporting fields and activity going on. So hopefully, we're going to draw good crowds, uh, and then we we put the product on the field that gets people to want to come back the following week. You know, Sam. Um, but there is a downside here, possibly, or possibly for your opponents. Uh, the new place you're playing at is a little further commute for the butcher. Uh, he may end up killing someone dealing with that kind of traffic. <laughs> no, nah, Dylan's all about it. He'll 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 travel across the world to play a game of footy for, uh, for the boys. So uh, he's he's there's no more passionate man in this city about about the ironworkers than Dylan. So um, you put some lines on the ground and, and he'll run out and, and put his body on the line for the boys. So he's excited. Nice. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about um, the two preseason games. You guys played uh, Toronto and then. Uh, Oak Glory DC Toronto that was interesting that was that was played in Michigan um you know preseason right did did the team maybe like hold back a little bit meaning like not reveal certain maybe like tactics or what was kind of the game plan going uh, into some of those matches yeah we I, I wouldn't say we held back anything and it was just a you know both times the first game for sure was a chance for us um just to run some of our systems and, and get comfortable not running into each other and, and playing against an opposition. Uh, give the coaches a chance to see different combinations. Uh, some of the younger guys who are probably 
trying to get some game time or earn earn a spot in the 23 gave them a chance to see how they handle this next level of rugby and, and the professional game um and and you know there wasn't much trial and error it was it was the systems that that we're looking to play throughout the year and just a chance to to stretch the legs and and see how all the boys pull up after 80 minutes of rugby so the second week against dc nothing really changed from from the first week a few different combinations and rotations in the squad but um for us the short runway of the preseason doesn't really allow you the the luxury of of you know holding back too much um mm. so you kind of have to throw it all out there and, and see how it goes and then and then work off that so i think we got a lot out of it it was really positive uh trip to, to detroit was great it was a nice indoor facility where we played um and then that dc set up at the st james is, is class as well so um we'll see both those teams twice throughout the year um so again good to good to get a match up against them early on yeah absolutely let's talk about the opening weekend it's it's right here i think we're all uh really excited certainly i think the marquee match is you know the the mlr shield final rematch um uh, so during, you know, you talked a little bit about rotating guys through and, and competition for, for roster spots on the, on the match day 23. But during the preseason, how much of your prep was specifically, say, for this weekend's match to prepare for round one, to prepare for Seattle? Uh, we had, so we played DC a couple of weeks ago and then it was, we had a weekend off last weekend. So, you know, arguably, you know, probably the last two weeks has been preparation for, for this game against Seattle. Uh you know, it's, it's the old cliche, but we're not looking too far ahead. We've got a, a not, you know a challenge ahead of us, traveling across the country and, and facing Seattle, who will be out for revenge. There's no doubt about that, and I think the target on our back, you know, will be everyone's aiming at that across the whole competition. So, um, new competition, new players, new squads across the league. So round one's always a funny one because you don't have a lot of film or, or footage to go over uh, of their previous games. So um, hard to kind of work out how you're going to attack these teams and, and you just probably shift the focus more to your own game and, and make sure we've got everything in the right place and then deal with it on the day. And, and you're, like you said, you're you know, obviously the team is going to be out for you. Seattle is. Uh, let's talk about that hostile territory. Also, Seattle has created an electrifying atmosphere with the fans and overall entertainment. They do a great job there with that whole deal. You know, what's the key going into that environment and coming out victors really? Yeah. for uh, I, I had the, the pleasure of playing Seattle in Seattle, my first five months mm -hmm. in the country back in 2017, I played half a season with the Seattle Saracens, now Seattle Rugby Club. And then yeah. first year of, I might have been the second year of, of the MLR, we traveled up there and that was my first experience of Starfire 28, 2019, I guess it was. And it's, it's hostile. It's probably the best term, but in the, you know, in the <laughs> best, in the best, in the most respectful way, you know, the fans are great. They're passionate. They make a lot of noise and it's a great venue. So, um, for us, it's it's just nailing our roles. Really, that's that's what we have to make sure we do. Make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, maybe talk a little bit louder or yell a little bit louder at my scrum house or, <laughs> or or outside backs to to give me pictures and whatnot. And then uh, and then just get on with the game. And and if we play well, we can try and quieten the crowd and prevent Seattle from getting an upper hand and and, and fueling that fire that comes from the stand. So um, yeah, winter in the Pacific Northwest isn't. <laughs> you know, is it pretty? But uh, that's another thing. You know, I hope the crowd comes out to support Seattle and, and we put on a good show. Uh, listeners, uh, in, in you just joining us now, we are live right now with Sam Windsor from Rugby New York. If you'd like to come up here and ask a question, please do so. You can request from the bottom left of the Twitter app. If you are live or listening in on Instagram, Facebook, or uh, YouTube, you can also DM questions there. We'll do our best to get the question online or live with Sam and our next guest as well. Uh, but come on up, come on live on the Twitter app if you can and ask your question yourself if you'd like. We'd love to have that happen. Uh, Sam, you know, this weekend's results aside, are you know, what are the expectations for the side? You know, the obviously the goal is to get back to the finals, but uh, is it that or bust? Yes, I guess. I think that's probably the, in, in the easiest way to answer that. Yeah. Um, we've set our sights on going back to back and we definitely, we're confident that we've got the squad and the players and, and the setup to do it. So, um, we don't like to look that far ahead, but for us, you know, that end goal is definitely raising that shield again. Um, I think how the enjoyment and the satisfaction and a bit of relief that the boys got last year from lifting it was, you know, it's like a drug, isn't it? You want, you just want to experience it again and again. So, um, yeah. guys in the squad that were there last year and are playing again this year, you know, we're all a year older, and you know, you don't, you, you don't want to finish with any regrets and whatnot. Um, 
so for us it's you know it's a, it's a chance to go back to back seattle have done it no reason why we can't so that's definitely where our end goal is but uh looking across the the squads and the teams that that have come into the league this year it's it's going to be harder than it was last year harder than it was the year before that so everyone's leveled up and and everyone's gunning for that that number one spot so really exciting season you know the mlr has gone from strength to strength um a few hiccups in the off season but you know, I think this year is probably going to be one of the most highly competitive seasons we've seen over the last couple of years. All right. Well, with that said, let's go to our first listener. Uh, we have our, our friend Stephen Lowen. How are you, Stephen? I'm good. How's it going? Awesome. What's hey, going Stephen. on? Uh, not a whole lot. Hey, Sam. Uh, quick question. So I was at the uh, preseason game um, in Michigan, and maybe it was just the facility, it being indoors, but uh, – those tackles sounded, the contact was, it was really physical, really hard hitting. I mean, did y'all dial back the intensity for preseason games? How much of that is on the forefront? I liked how, uh, how, I liked how Bill gave the intro, the hard hitting fly halves, which I don't think I've ever been called a hard hitting <laughs> fly half. So I, uh, I don't think I was one of those players putting on those big hits, but there was definitely no dialing back in those games, you know, preseason or, or, or league game. As soon as you, you ease off the gas, you know, there's, there's going to be injuries and there's going to be probably more pain. So uh, boys are playing for position, two trial games, four and a half, five-week preseason. You need to take every opportunity. So uh, we knew Toronto were a physical a physical side and they were going to bring it, so we had to match them. And um, that was boys going you know, toe-to-toe, 100% for, for 80 minutes. So um, there were some sore bodies on the plane going home in the next day for sure. Awesome. Thanks. Well, I appreciate the answer. Cheers, mate. I hope to see you at some more games. Yeah, absolutely. See ya. Good Thanks, stuff, Stephen. Steven. Steven always has Stephen always has the best questions. And good luck in fantasy MLR round one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll tell Sam about that maybe at the end of the episode. Fantasy MLR is a real thing, buddy. I did have uh, a uh, I did have a look through Twitter. I saw the squads come out. Uh, <laughs> and who everyone picks? So it's, I'm, I'm interested by. I mean, I'm, a, I'm obsessed with fantasy NFL, so uh, oh, well, I've got, I've got right. a lot of time for that. But well, I, we I apologize. Be... Neither one of us picked you. I'm sorry, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> who did? I did, did Jay, who did pick me? I, I'm trying to work out. It was either maybe James. Was it James, James Dealey? It might have been. Oh, yeah. I got to go back and look this. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course, we get to talk fantasy MLR, and we're not prepared for it. <laughs> <laughs> We're both losing. We're not going to win this league, obviously. <laughs> well, Sam, every time I was just about to pick you, the guy in front of me got you. So, ah. you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. But um, uh, let's well, let's talk a little bit MLR honors here for a second. You were the you were the 25th player in uh, in MLR history to reach 50 caps. It's quite the achievement there for sure. You know, you've, you've been in the league since the beginning. You mentioned that. Um, what was your impression of the league that first season, and how has it changed since then? Uh, my impression, you know, it was exciting. I think it's probably the best way to explain that, that first year. It was, uh, we in Houston, we, we played, I think it was 13 games or maybe 16 games before the start of the season. We need, you know, we tried to drive, uh, the attraction to the Houston market, you know, from an early part of 2017. Uh, and then we played an exhibition series at the baseball stadium. Um, and then it was, you know, there was seven teams in it the first year. So I think that kind of wet the appetites for people around the country. And uh, it was definitely promising. You know, we got through that year and then, the you know, people were interested in it and the interest grew and grew and grew and then more teams started to come in. So um, it's been a steady rise in quality of, of the product, obviously quality of the players, uh, production uh, and, and the whole makeup of the league. So, um no, I'm hoping that it can get to the heights it deserves and, and kind of become a, you know, a prominent professional league, you know, along sides of, you know, the, the Japanese top league and even the ITM minor 10 cup, um, those sorts of leagues is, is where I think this league can get to. And I think we're on the right track. It's probably not going to come as soon as everyone had hoped, but a little bit of patience and I think we'll be there. And Sam, I looked it up and thank you, Stephen, for filling us in, but Dankest Anchors is the team name. He drafted you, Sam. Okay. So you're, you're on the Dankest, nice. the Dankest Anchors. All right. <laughs> Great name. I'll hopefully do him proud. <laughs> <laughs> I, want to, uh, I, want to, I want to touch here a little bit um, on, on your bio here. So I'm, I'm going to try my best to pronounce the name of this, the town you were born in. But sure. Is it Bungendor? 
That's good. Bungando is yeah, Bungando. Okay. And does yeah. it get shortened to like uh, Bungi? Bungers. Bungers. Okay. Bungers. Wow. Yeah. 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 Back in so, Bungers. That's it. So that's outside of Canberra, right? Yeah, about about uh, 30, 40 minutes east towards the the coast. Um, about an hour from the south coast, as it's called, back home. So mum and yeah. dad, uh, about 10-acre property just outside of the town on Lake George. Uh, went to school in Canberra yeah. um, and then spent some time in Sydney after I, I was about 19 and 20. Very nice. I, uh, I, I studied abroad at the University of Wollongong. Had yes. a blast. Yeah. Easy, mm-hmm. easy trip up to Sydney, easy trip down the coast. But I always – this is – I've always wanted to know and I've asked – people and they've always laughed at me but where does the australian bush end and the outback <laughs> officially begin is there a clear line of demarcation or is it just so there is the great dividing range is a, is a mountain range that runs up the eastern seaboard so you could probably argue that might be where the bush ends and the outback starts so it divides i guess the coast from the inland uh but no, there's probably no geographical marker that separates <laughs> here's the outback and here's the bush. So, yeah, it'll be person to person. The outback is the bush and the bush is the outback. We've obviously ran out of hard-hitting questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, with that said, uh, I've been looking at the people listening in on Instagram Live and others. Uh, I just want to say um, um, USA Hooker, Capelli Piffoletti, go to bed. It's like 1.30 in the morning over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that said, all right. Um, uh, Sam, so according to our research team, aka um, Wikipedia, um, you, you've, you've, you're quite the rugby world travel. You know, obviously, Australia, um, Ireland, right? Was that accurate? Ulster? Um, and obviously, obviously, the USA for the last six years. But uh, when you first got the idea you could play overseas, I mean, did you ever think you'd end up in America? Never. No, yeah. I wouldn't have. I would never have guessed that I would have come here. So my grandfather was born. Born in Cork, migrated to Australia mm. ah. in the early 1900s. So got the Irish passport. Not long after I graduated high school, um, was you know was determined to to crack it into the Brumby setup, um, play for my local team, had a couple cracks at it, went to Sydney, played some club footy, <clears throat> pardon me, and then uh, and now nothing sort of came of it. So went back overseas, came back, played two years in London, uh, Blackheath Rugby Club there with my brother. So we played you know, juniors growing up, and then we got to play when I graduated high school for the Queenian Whites the local team uh, just outside of Canberra and then he moved overseas. So, uh, you know, the opportunity to play with him overseas was great. Spent two good years with Blackheath and then came back to have another shot at the Brumbies and all to no avail, but that opened doors overseas and I got to travel again back to, back to Ireland. Um, got to train alongside likes of Brian O'Driscoll, Jimmy Gopeth, oh, nice. um, you know, some, some absolute all-stars of the game. Um, and then eventually landed in, in Ulster, after a short uh, a short spell at Worcester, and uh, that was where you know I thought I was going to spend a long time. And while I was in London, we had a trip to to the states at the end of the season for a bit of a rugby tour, and that's where I would I would meet my eventual wife. So on mm. tour with the boys, bumped into Becca in a in a in a bar in Vegas, and then four years later we <laughs> we started dating, and that's how I ended up in the states. So uh, grateful for that uh, for that occurrence and that that chance meeting, and then. Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a gamble. I left my my. I was halfway through my second year at Ulster and, and just wasn't really enjoying my rugby and needed needed to change you know, a bit of a sea change. So yeah. um, got a release out of my contract. It was all amicable there, and uh, got a lot of love for the for the north coast of Ireland um, and came to America, hoping that something was going to come of pro rugby back in 2016. And um, yeah, went up to Seattle and then the MLR was here the next year. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You don't often hear, or I wish I would often hear that when you meet a a woman or man, whatever, in Vegas, that you quickly ran to that little chapel with uh, Elvis <laughs> Presley and got married. But that wasn't the case, huh? <laughs> it wasn't. It was no, it, it, no. I don't even think we we, Wait, we probably joked about were it. You, at one okay. stage, but it would have been. Uh, yeah, we definitely joked about it after the fact when we we stayed in touch over the next the next few years, and I uh, just became really good mates and then it was it was actually a seamless transition from pen pals basically to boyfriend and girlfriend so um there you go she's loved it you know she uh she's been with me since the start i dragged her to texas she grew up in north carolina and never thought she'd live in texas so she was there for four years with me and she loves the the east coast and new york so the opportunity to come here and to put her in an environment where she was going to thrive and enjoy life was almost more important to where i would end up playing my rugby i could 
happily play anywhere in the world. So um, the opportunity to come here and give her something back was was too good to pass up. All right, uh, two more questions for you, Sam. Um, I got one for you, and then Fitzy's got a, um, a a bit of a New York City question for you. But um, you've been in the league for a little bit for a while now, uh, and I forget. You know, I was I was distracted earlier, so hopefully he didn't ask this question already. Um, what was your impression of the league to begin with, and how much has that changed until now? Yeah, um, I probably didn't answer it as well as I could have before. But, That's why I'm asking um, again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got that. I'm, I'm trying to think, did I answer that question? Uh, the first impressions were great. We, I, I probably took a roundabout way of saying we, we played a lot of club teams in our in our preseason, and yeah. then we we'll probably thought we were prepared for for the level of competition in the MLR, and and you know everyone was above where we were. Um, so I was probably surprised by the standard in that first year, but haven't been surprised every year since that it's got better and better and better just because of the attraction of coming to play rugby out here in the States. Um, young players coming through, local players coming through, an opportunity to play professional sports. So, um, you know, I, I, the joke about, you know, the sleeping giant in the US I think is probably long gone, but now now it's a legitimate slow burn to, to make this, you know, this country a powerhouse in men's and, and women's rugby. So um, fortunately we have the MLR and hopefully it's not too long before you know, the women aren't forced to go across to play in, in England and other parts of the world and there's a professional league mm-hmm. for them here so to grow the game as well. No, that's a great answer, Sam. And um, we, I need to do a better job of, of telling Bill that he needs to get down with the New York new branding because it's not Rugby New York anymore. It's New York oh. Iron Workers. So Bill will work on that. <laughs> no, you look at go to the we... website, you'll see it. <laughs> it is it is Rugby New York Iron Workers. So technically you're both right. Yeah. So we'll yeah. give it a pass. There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got uh, one question before uh, we get you out of here and I cut uh, Bill's mic off. But um, <laughs> you've, been, you've been in New York City for a couple of years now what is your favorite place to eat in new york city uh it's a good one uh big fan of italian food there's a little little restaurant in the in the west village called canto um really really good spot ruby rosa's uh staple in new york little pizza joint in soho tough to get a table but uh very popular uh but yeah probably canto we uh we've had a couple of nice dinners there uh, in, the, in the West Village. I love Greenwich Village. I'll go in there mm-hmm. off days or whatnot, just get on the path, get off, grab a coffee, walk around, see a few celebrities, <laughs> grab a sandwich from the deli, sit in the park, just watch people watch for, you know, however long. It's 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 a very, very, very nice place to be and, and to have that luxury of just getting out of the house and enjoying the city is, is very cool. A few celebrities, like no one walks up to you and says, hey, are you Sam Winter? <laughs> <laughs> it's rugby. Uh, that'll, be the, that'll be the day. <laughs> To be honest, I could say the people, who, not celebrities, but as big as New York is, the occurrences of bumping into people that you know yeah. just in the middle of Fifth Avenue or something or getting out of a cab in Tribeca is, is ridiculous. It's, you know, you don't expect to run into people and then you're like, hang on, that person's from, <laughs> from my hometown. And you're like, what the hell? So it's quite, it's, those kind of things is great. And that's, that's the beauty about this city and, and rugby as well. You run into people who you know from back home or they're friends with your neighbor or something like that. So. It is. Uh, it's definitely a melting pot of, of rugby nuts. This city. Yeah. All right. Hey, Sam Windsor. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, really appreciate you giving us your time here. Good luck this weekend and good luck the rest of the season. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. Cheers. Have a good night. Cheers. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in so far for this last thirty minutes. Uh, awesome conversation with Sam Windsor from Rugby New York. Iron workers, Fitzy, hear that? Rugby New York Iron Workers. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, we have another 28, 30 minutes left for our next guest. And let's get right into it, Fitzy, because it, it's there's no reason to hold back now. Because our second guest of the night, who, if he was smart, was taking notes the last 30 minutes. Um, let's all welcome Seattle Seawolves fly half, AJ Alatimu. AJ, how are you? Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good, good. Did I say your last name correctly? Yeah, no, it's perfect, bro. Oh, all right, that's that's the that's the show. It's called a night. <laughs> all right, so uh, AJ, you know what? Uh, let's get right into it. Really, let let's get into the meat of the show. Let's talk about the, this weekend, especially it's opening Major League Rugby weekend um, and a rematch of last year's Shields Finals match. Um, you know, during this preseason, you know, how much of your prep was really specifically for this weekend's match? Maybe a bit of a redemption. Yeah. Bro. Um, I think the boys are still a bit hurt from from last year. A couple of boys that are back. So um, yeah, preseason was 
just like Sam said, you know, it's pretty much just focus on ourselves. Um, there wasn't much footage like Sam said on other teams and I, I think the focus for us this week was, you know, it, it's a big game, especially for us losing in that grand final last year, but it's also focusing on, on us and how we start the season. Yeah, and, and, you know, obviously I know what your answer is going to be here, but I need to ask the question, you know, last year was the Seawolves' third appearance in the finals. You know, can the Seawolves get back to the finals for fourth time this this year I mean this in their career there oh, um, yes yep. say yes AJ <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we, we definitely um, have, the, have the players um, in the squad to, to go back into that grand final but like Sam said you know you don't want to kind of look look ahead too much but yeah to answer that question yes <laughs> Nuts, yeah, as, as to be expected, right? Like Seattle, you guys have had some, some great seasons up there. Let's talk a little bit about how the things are shaping up. Uh, team capper, captain, excuse me, Reichert Hatting said he feels like this team is a better, maybe more well-rounded team this season. What are your what are your thoughts on how you feel the, the new boys are, are coming together? Yeah, um, that's a really good um, signings this year, and, and it's uh, put a lot of depth in the team. Like last year, we... I think the first half of the season we were struggling, especially in the in the forwards. But this year we um, recruited really well, and um, yeah, we've got some good players. And so our props doesn't don't play eighty minutes. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, we've uh, recruited really well this year. So hopefully it pays off. Yeah, some some of those new players, right? You got you know, Wing Connor Mooney, hand prop. Mason, the hitman, Peterson, just to name a couple of them. I guess, you know, how do you feel the new teams, the teammates are fitting into the culture in Seattle and does it excite you to have them on the squad? Yeah, um, the new boys really, I think, um, you know, we we had a couple of team outings and they kind of seen what what it's like to be in Seattle and, and the boys that are still that are still here from last year and they fit, fit in really well. Um, uh, definitely a, a different shock to them, you know, different city, um, new people, new systems, um, new coaches, but nah, they, they've all fitted in really well and it's been good having, having new boys in and um, yeah, they've all just fitted in like we've been together for the last two years. So nah, it's been really good. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about your, uh, your your playing relationship with the young 24-year-old center, Tavide Lepetti, who's earned a couple USA uh, rugby caps. Mm-hmm. You know, you t- it seems like you two really work well together and have formed quite that midfield combination. Talk a bit about that pairing and what you see in, in this young player. Yeah, first time seeing um, beat there was um, the St. Mary's played a game out and against uh, Seattle Rugby and I think that uh, we were all there with the coaches you know watching and just seeing them um, play was was pretty was pretty buzzing you know just seeing another Islander um, just carving up and stuff so and then coming into the system you know um, he he runs hard he's a hard hitter as well and he's still learning like myself and you know we kind of feed off each other but it's been really good working with him. Um, he's grown heaps over the last year, getting those U.S. camps and, you know, coming back into the season this year was, he's changed a lot and um, just real, just owning up and understanding the game a bit more. So, Yeah, uh, just a quick comment about you know, players in your team, actually a former player, uh, uh, Samu Manoa. Uh, last year I, I, mm. I had a, a little conversation with him after the New England match in New England. Uh, and I shook the man's hand, and holy crap, yeah. it's the size of your head, AJ. I, I, obviously, you shook his hands before, but how is that even possible? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, the block monster, we call him over yeah. here, is, uh, yeah, he's a big boy. Oh. <laughs> <That's the laughs> so, AJ, you, I don't know if you saw it on, on Twitter um, earlier today, but uh, the Rugby Network shared a, a video clip of you being very vocal on the field, right? Like directing yeah. traffic. And it was a really cool clip. But <laughs> I, I guess you saw it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How vocal do you get on the field, and, and you know, does that come natural to you? Oh, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, as a ten, you you can't just be quiet on the field. You have to kind of be that voice, um, the the general they they call. But um, yeah, I think if you have a quiet ten, then pretty much the boys are a bit lost out there. So um, I do my best when I'm not tired. I'm I'm screaming and, and yelling at the boys, but. Um, most of the time, I'm just puffing and puffing, trying to catch some air. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, listeners, uh, uh, thank you all for tuning in. If you'd like to ask a question here on Twitter Spaces, go ahead and request in the bottom left of the screen uh, and come up here as soon as you can. We'll get you up here as soon as you can and ask a question of AJ, myself, or Fitzy. Uh, we'd love to have you guys uh, lead the show a little bit as well, come up with your own questions. You might have better questions than us, obviously. If you are listening in on the live streams on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, uh, either join us over here on Twitter Spaces or go ahead and DM uh, or in the chat. Go ahead and ask a question. We'll try to get up here as well. Uh, AJ, let's go. Let's talk about the su- success on the field. You know, for you personally, actually, uh, you came into the league in 21 and you made an immediate impact uh, for Seattle. Uh, the following year, 22, no different, but you led the league also in a number of categories points scored, uh, tied for the most playoff points, uh, just to name a couple. But but one, one stat that really stood out for me was kicking meters, okay? Over 5,500 meters, nearly 2,000 more than the second-place player, which was the uh, Free Jacks uh, Boney Waka. Uh, you apparently have a very good eye for the field. Is that a testament to your kicking training, abilities, um, field awareness, or is it also really weighed upon uh, your teammates and communication with them as well? Um, yeah, I was actually quite surprised at that stat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the the difference of how much I kicked, you know, but um, uh, the boys weren't too happy about that because you know, they always complain <laughs> if I kick the ball too much, and especially our fullback uh, Duncan. He's always screaming at me to stop kicking the ball. And he's got to chase it pass down. It to him, but yeah, <laughs> but I think it's more like um, just the out, outside backs, you know, um, seeing seeing the space and then kind of just calling it in because mm-hmm. like once I hear this space, then I just just kick it down, close my eyes, and kick the ball down there. Hopefully, it goes out or or stays in field. So, no, it, it's all a, a team a team step, but it's just me kicking it pretty much because JP does some of the most of the kicking mm-hmm. as well sometimes. So, no, uh, yeah. Well, we asked our last guest Sam, who's listening in now. So AJ, be careful! Don't give away any team secrets. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we asked him about playing at Seattle. You're obviously familiar with the, the scene there, the Seattle crowd, the stadium. Uh, you know, do you, um, you know, the players, do you notice the home crowd? I mean, do you feel, uh, also feel that Seattle is one of the best home field advantages in Major League Rugby? Yeah, definitely. Um, even the some of the new boys that, you know, experienced that in our first uh, preseason game against uh, the Raptors, you know, they kind of saw what the, the crowd is like and, yeah, I think we do have the best um, best crowd in, in MLR, and uh, they're, they're loyal fans. I think Sam Sam would know it, um, um, playing here in Seattle, but um, they, hopefully they, they they all come along on on Saturday and make it hard for Sam and me. <laughs> <laughs> so AJ, new for. Uh... For this year and uh, across the board, there was a number of uh, clubs that got new looks, new jerseys. Um, thoughts on the new look for the jerseys? Because kind of gone is that traditional, right, Seattle mix of, of green and blue. How does the, the group feel about the, the new look? Yeah, I'm, I don't really know, way. Eh? Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, we, the, the jerseys are nice. Because um, uh, uh, it, it's black and green, eh? Black and green? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. primarily black and green now, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't know how I feel about that, but the jersey's nice, though. Like, feels good, and I guess... Mm. I don't know. How do you guys feel about it? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you know, Fitz, that's kind of a question going to a restaurant asking the waitress. Uh, <laughs> how do you feel about this you uh, fish sandwich? Oh, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> It just probably doesn't care. He's like, just give me a jersey. I don't care what color. <laughs> exactly. <I'll go> <laughs> All 
All right, scratch that question from from now on, Bill. <laughs> next time we have players on, <laughs> let's talk about something else. Let's talk about uh, Rugby World Cup 2023 and uh, playing for uh, Samoa. So Samoa is um, if qualified, they're in uh, they're in Pool D. Uh, very exciting stuff. Uh, your last appearance for Samoa was uh, last summer against Tonga. Um, will we see you in contention for a spot on the Rugby World Cup roster? Um, yeah. Something I, you know, always dream of is is playing for for Samoa, and I definitely put my hand up. And you know, there's we got a lot of uh, good players, you know, putting their hands up as well, and players coming through. So, um, yeah, so if I get picked, I I get picked, but I, I'll definitely try and put my best foot forward for that for a spot in the team. But um, just got to control what I can do, and hopefully play well for Seattle and. And have a good season here. So, yeah, for sure. You know, AJ, there was a, a match that really sticks out in my mind, and it's not just because USA is involved. I mean, always, always the USA matches, but, and I know you remember this match, USA Samoa 2019, um, wet, very physical match. You know, also two of your uh, Seabulls teammates were on the USA side, Ben Landry and uh, Martin uh, Iasefo. Um, second half. Samoa actually, you know, really outplayed USA in, this, you know, in that match in the second half, but came up short with USA winning 13-10. Uh, I'm just going through some stats here. You know, you kicked a conversion. AJ McGinty, your, uh, the opposite side fly half, mm. ended up scoring all the points for America. But here's my question about this that was match. This like PG, eh? I'm sorry? No, no, no. Is this, uh, this No, no, Samoa. Uh, am I wrong? I, am I game. completely wrong? No, but this is the match that um, uh, the referee missed call to play. And it, uh, if I believe it correctly, Samoa, one of the players, uh, kicked the ball, even though uh, the assistant referee said, you know, off the boots, what he said, and, but Nigel, the referee at the time, Nigel Owen, said it was a knock, and it would have been uh, a, clearly a try, which would have been put Samoa in the lead. Am I, am I messing up names here, messing up games? No, I, I, I remember that game because it was played in Fiji. Oh, yes, 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 in Fiji. Sorry, uh-huh. yes, yes. Yeah, just trying to remember the game. So. Yeah, but when it was that so? I mean, that had to have been hard for you guys to take uh, as a loss because, you know, uh, a, a, an error basically uh, side of that game for the USA. You know, is that something that you thought much about, or is like, yeah, I haven't thought about it until Bill brought it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that last part. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I remember that game. Um, I think it was my my first start as well, and yeah. I, uh, I didn't play too well, but um, um, yeah, the the team, uh, AJ McGinty, he played really well that game, and um, yeah, it's a tough next one. Question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> next question, Fitzy, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we are we are misfiring on our questions with AJ. AJ's like, I'm not going back on that. Do, do we have like a, a recipe question for AJ? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your time with the Western Force, okay? Um, USA Eagle Marcel Brocky played with the Force. Did, did you guys cross paths at that time? Yeah, he, he was actually uh, still there when I uh, signed my first year there, and he was one of the legends in the club. So, yeah, I know Marcel. Well, okay, so you mentioned legend there, which is which is which is great because my left my next question is you're kind of labeled Samoa's unofficial maybe Joker dance off leader. <laughs> Marcel is definitely well known for his post game songs and dancing. What was the what was the competition like in the locker room after games for who played who played what song? He actually um he actually leads our, our team song, Marcel. He um yeah. he's got a horrible voice though. <laughs> <laughs> just he just screams the intro and then kinda of everyone gets in. But um nah yeah, Marcel was he was one of the, the old heads in the team when when I was there and at the force, because yeah, he is pretty old, eh? <laughs> he was uh, old. Wait, did you say he was yeah. old then? <laughs> yeah, that's Wait, what I'm saying now. When do you play San Diego? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch your backside. I'm sure he's like 30, 38 or something right now. Yeah, and he, he went through like seven different um, hairstyles that were actually pretty <laughs> hilarious. If you remember some of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, AJ, let's talk a little bit about um, kind of growing up. Um, when when did you first start 
playing rugby or what was your first memory of, of playing rugby when you were growing up? Um, my first time playing rugby was in high school. I uh, wasn't allowed to play juniors because um, my dad, I don't know, my dad just said I couldn't play sports. So mm-hmm. I uh, just started playing rugby when I was in high school um, and then played my club club footy in, in Auckland for Ardmore Marist. Uh, I played in the age groups here, counties, um, growing up you know, under 16s, 18s, and then moved to to Australia. And that's when I kind of played and kind of picked up the, the force gig. And then, um, yeah, fast forward, I ended up in, in Seattle. Um, and then was uh, blessed to, to get a chance to play, to go back in, in New Zealand and, and play NPC for Counties Manukau. So, yeah, it's been, rugby journey's been, been good so far and hopefully have a few couple of years left before I... Uh, I go back to working at the factory. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems like you skipped a few steps there too. It's like it was here. I couldn't play younger, and then now I was in Seattle. And <laughs> yeah, but you you, had a, you got I guess relatively late start. I mean, was there a point? Is there a point you can actually talk about now that you realized, okay, you know, I'm I'm pretty good at this game. I could play professionally or at the international level. Yeah, I think it was when um, I signed off the the Western Force. You know, that's when I kind of felt like I had to take it seriously, you know, and uh, actually getting paid to do it. So I think that's where it kind of sparked. Um, and then when my time was finished of um, the force, I kind of had a year off just uh, playing club footy in, in Brisbane. And, and I still had that, you know, that fire in me to, to try and get a another professional gig. So yeah, it's definitely the time when I signed with the Western Force. You know, actually, uh, speaking of Western Force, this reminds me um, stadiums. So Seattle obviously has a, a very good atmosphere here, and MLR. New England has a very good atmosphere. Um, you know, a handful of stadiums have a really good atmosphere for the game. But the stadium you played in was Western Force, especially during the, what was it, the World World Rugby, whatever that league was at the time. Yeah. I mean, the owner put on spectacular um, entertainment for the fans. I mean, halftime mm. concerts, put whatever else. Uh, obviously dialed down a bit with Major League Rugby, but there's got to be some similarities there as far as entertainment goes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was the first time I've ever experienced like um, halftime show and, or even before the game, they completely turned the lights off and stuff. Because um, mm-hmm. I thought that would have been crazy because surely you'd <laughs> have time to heat up the lights again, but they, they managed to do that. And, um, but the... Uh, the entertainment over here, like watching the NFL, um, a halftime show on on Sunday was pretty crazy. So um, it'll be good if you know we get some some of that stuff at Starfire. You know, yeah. We we have fireworks though, so it's pretty cool. Well, maybe maybe you run into the owner one day and give him some ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> AJ, in your uh, in your travels around uh, the U.S., is there a is there a favorite city that you visited, or um, uh, maybe a favorite city where you where you played rugby, um, maybe against an MLR squad? Yeah, um, I think New York. Uh, went there last year and um, got to go to the Times Square, which was pretty crazy. Um, yeah. You know, only seeing that stuff on TV and to actually be in the middle of all the screens and and the lights and stuff was pretty crazy and um san diego san diego was a good was a good spot just nice and hot you know especially coming from the rain in seattle so (laughs) yeah san diego has some of the best weather in the country all year long which Mm. is crazy uh you know i I got a i got a, a a question for you. I, I played with um, in my club level. Fitzy, I'm gonna bring it up. Uh, I, <laughs> in my club days, I'm gonna say which club in Atlanta. A um, uh, handful of Fijian Samoans um, played with, and they all run at a certain lower level of gravity, which always killed me. Uh, however, they were w- very well known for the kava. Uh, are you known mm. for your kava? Oh, nah. <laughs> I, I, I could, I could drink it, but. Uh... Yeah, so the Fijians, they go 
in 24 hours drinking tumblers. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm one of those, um, you know, three cups and then probably look for a cause of load or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the club level in sevens, um, uh, CT, one of our club uh, teammates, he would serve it to us in the middle of a sevens tournament. And we were the most <laughs> chill, chill team out there <laughs> with our yeah, sarongs on we... and kava. We didn't win. <laughs> we were chill. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely um, something that the boys get around to, to connect with each other. Yeah. Um, a couple of nights. So, but me and I, not really a kava. Have a guy. Nice. Now, AJ, are you uh, are you um, are you a big coffee drinker at all? Uh, yes, uh, love love coffee. Um, I've just started uh, drinking just black coffee with honey. Yeah. Mm, that's 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 the go to at the moment. So. Well, I asked because right in Seattle, seemingly there's a Starbucks on every corner. So of course I'm yeah. going to ask you. What's your go-to coffee order at Starbucks? Uh, I usually just go for uh, like a double espresso or just a flat white. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been to a couple of Starbucks where they give me that look. I'm like, uh, what the hell is a flat white? So, <laughs> <laughs> what, what name but do you give pretty... them? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just, just a normal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, okay, AJ, listen, we've got a couple more minutes with you. Um, let's talk about the next couple of days leading into this weekend. Uh, we're circling back again. Um, you have training, I believe, tomorrow. When do you head out to uh, Seattle? Oh, I'm sorry, you're in Seattle. Um, what are the next couple of days of training like be leading into this match this weekend? Um, yeah, so we've got a uh, full day tomorrow training, and then uh, Fridays, just the, the power and um, captain's run, which is pretty chilled, and then. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, prepare for, for Saturday. It's going to be a big one, so need all the rest. Yeah, very nice. All right, we're going to go to uh, a, another listener right here who came in just a second ago. Uh, John, Trevor, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Awesome. Yeah, hey, AJ, I just wanted to ask, because uh, watching you play, man, you're an absolute sniper from the tee, and you put, like, really nice shape on your kicks. Like, uh, how did uh, how did you get so good at that? It was just all the hours you've banked on the pitch and on the training pitch or were there also any, any other kickers who you kind of watched and got some technique from just, uh, just curious on that. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, just try and, and practice as much as I can. Um, and, uh, uh, I, I watched, uh, I like watching Owen Farrell a lot when he kicks. So, um, yeah, you strike um, it like him. <laughs> yeah, and but to be honest, like um, I kind of just aim it, you know, just to the right of the right post. Keep my head down, close my eyes, and kick pretty much. That's <laughs> and, um, and 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 just hope it goes over. So that's pretty much how how I've been doing it. So if you're listening out there and you want some tips for kicking, just just to the right of the right post. Walk back and just kick. <laughs> you make you make it sound so easy. <laughs> it makes it look easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So AJ, uh, one last thing before we wrap up tonight's show. Um, you're signed to what 2024 end of next season? Is that accurate? Uh, yep. So have you thought much? I mean, I, I, everyone seems to say the you know answer this, this question the same way. Have you thought much more after that? I mean, you mentioned about going back working for the factory, but I mean, you're you know, a relatively young guy, especially Major League Rugby goes. I mean, are are you looking to looking forward to maybe get back to family eventually? Obviously, we all are, but are you even thinking about that at all? Is this uh, after next year? Yeah. Uh, um, no, not really. Just trying to, um, you know, take this year. Yeah. Uh, slowly and, and see what happens. Um, you know, I've still got one more year uh, over here, so and um, see what happens. Might go back and play in, in New Zealand in the NPC. Nice. Um, but um, yeah, not not really looking too far ahead. I'd, I'd like to get into coaching hmm. at some point. So um, you know, if there's a club around the league, he's looking for a player coach. 
after next year then. <laughs> There's a few college sides. Are you, have you gone? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know my Twitter account now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, AJ, man, uh, we really enjoyed this conversation, this talk with you. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And again, good luck this season and the rest of the season. No, thank weekend. you guys for having. Uh, thank, thank you for having me, and uh, good luck to, to Sam as well and his boys getting over on Friday. So yeah, yeah. it'll be a good one. It will be. Thanks, AJ. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, a lot of fun tonight uh, talking to both Sam Windsor from Rugby New York and AJ. Uh, Alatumu from Seattle Seawolves. They are battling off. They're battling it against each other this weekend. God, I, I keep messing up words. Uh, in Seattle, it should be a great match to watch, a rematch again of last year's finals. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, tune in next Wednesday. We'll announce our guest coming up. Uh, I'm not sure what Fitzy and I are going to talk about yet next week yet, but we'll figure it out soon. Uh, but again, thank you, everybody. Uh, it's been a blast, and have a great night. <laughs>